church this morning it is our prayer that it becomes our desire that we honor God and serve him uh, praise the Lord Amen. it's good to see all of you this morning and those of you that are joining us online thank you so much for being with us uh, why don't we rise to our feet uh, we'll have a word of prayer then we'll go into our service let us pray Heavenly Father, we thank you for this beautiful morning that you've given us. Jesus. Lord, we pray for the lives that are present here and those that are watching online. Lord, we pray that your spirit be with us. Guide us. Help us to understand, to take part in the service so that we can honor your name, we can glorify your name. We thank you for the week that has passed. Lord, we thank you for your protection, for your mercy, for your love in our lives. And Lord, we pray for each and every person that will be taking part in the service today. Lord, we commit their lives into your hands. We thank you and we pray that the Spirit guides them so that we can have a time of praise and worship that is done to honor and glorify your name. So we commit the rest of the service and everyone into your mighty hands. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. It's good to see all of you tonight, uh, this morning. Uh, thank you so much for being here again. Uh, why don't we join our choir team as the leaders in a time of praise and worship? Hallelujah. There's no one like Jesus. Amen. 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 So until we walked and walked and searched everywhere, turned around everywhere we looked, but there we couldn't find anyone who comes close to who Jesus is. Praise the Lord. Amen. There's only one Jesus. There's Amen. no one that can match his name. Hallelujah. So let's all get together and sing this song and praise the Lord this morning. There's no one, there's no one like Jesus. There's no one, there's no one like Him. There's no one, there's no one like Jesus. There's no one, there's no one like Him. There's no one like Jesus. No one, there's no one like Jesus. There's no one, there's no one like Him. There's no one, there's no one, there's no one like Jesus. Oh, there's no one. Spirit is in us and around us. Praise the Lord. There's a feeling in the air.
Lord, for your presence. Thank you that you have never left us alone. And you will never leave us. Nor forsake us. We thank you, Jesus. Oh, Lord, we thank you for your goodness. Jesus, we worship you, praise you this morning. We know that you are greater. And when you are with us, who can be against us? Hallelujah. Jesus, hallelujah, we thank you.
our burdens, greater than our sickness. Lord, you have victory over everything. You have overcome this world. Lord, we do not be afraid. We do not need to be afraid. Lord, because you have overcome this world. We thank you, Lord, because you are greater. You are greater, Lord Jesus. Greater than anything that we face.
you are awesome in this place my father hallelujah jesus we praise you my lord glory to you in the highest my lord hallelujah father hallelujah jesus we worship your holy name my lord oh we thank you for the awesome name of jesus my lord the most powerful name the name that gives us healing that sets us free from our sins hallelujah mighty jesus hallelujah oh we place our lives in your hands my lord we humble ourselves before you mighty god we give you all glory and honor and praise we are nothing without you my father we are nothing without you my jesus hallelujah lord we place our burdens upon you my jesus your word says come to you come to me you who are weary and i will give you rest oh we place all our burdens upon you my jesus glory to you my lord hallelujah jesus for you give us rest my lord you give us peace my lord and you give us joy my lord oh hallelujah jesus we praise you my lord glory to you father glory to you jesus hallelujah 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 heavenly father we come before you in the name of jesus and we bring all who are here today in your presence my lord we thank you that you have protected protected us and that you've saved us my lord and that you've chosen us my lord to be a part of your kingdom father we pray that as we proceed further in this service you will be with the speaker that you will be anointed by your holy spirit and whatever message is brought to us today will be from you and that it will encourage us uplift us and prepare us for the work that you have set for us my god we give this service and all who are here in your mighty and holy hands in jesus name we pray Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Uh let's welcome brother Edwin as he brings today's words. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So good to see all of you here uh, this morning and uh, I hope you are very excited to be found in the presence of the Lord. it's always and always the best place to be praise the lord i don't think anywhere else you will find the peace the joy the hope the love that we find in the presence of god and amongst the people of god amen thank you aunty veer for agreeing with me <laughs> i said it is always the best place to be the presence of god and among the people of god because that's where we find our hope that's where we find love that's where we find peace we have victories over everything and every part of our life uh, this month uh, we are talking about evangelism and uh, i'm here standing before you um and uh, and i find myself very much in your shoes because i'm not going to speak about something that you need improvements on i'm going to speak on something that i feel that i also need improvements on as part of my life so this is for as as much as for me as it is for you so let's uh, let's dwell on the word of god and see what god has uh, for us today uh, last week our senior pastor spoke about evangelism and uh, he has shared some very beautiful thoughts with us and today i would like to just focus on personal witnessing and the two areas that i've picked about of or regarding personal witnessing is personal witnessing by sharing your personal testimony and number two personal witnessing by your life and the way that you live so that's the two aspects that i'd like to share with you but before that i'm going to call a few people to please come and share with us you know how they or their family received the lord jesus christ in their lives I I have been here for the last 23 years in this church and many of you sitting in this place even I do not know how you and your family got saved so uh, it's important that we know that we share what God has done with us not what with each other but also to the rest of the world uh, so I have asked uh, auntie any to uh, share with us I think we we know about uncle a lot I think many of you may not even know how she got saved she and her family she's going to come and tell us uh, briefly how that happened so let's just pay attention in here as aunty any comes please give her a warm warm welcome
Praise the Lord. I think this is the first time I'm going to give this testimony of how I could see. In 1959, one of my classmates invited me to the Sunday school in Flexile Church, an old building, and with the missionaries there, and Brother Boss. So I went there to attend the Sunday school, and then the same year, because after the Sunday school, I stayed back in the service, you know, in the same year, in 1959, some people are not even born that time. I accepted Christ as my savior. And then as the years went by, my whole family got saved, and except my father. And in 1965, when he met an accident in the street, his car went down 30 feet down. <coughs> and not a scratch in his body. And that's the time he accepted the law. And uh, attending the service in Flagstaff, 1960, I got baptized there in April. Uh, that was during Easter time. And it's a joy because uh, God had saved me and my family to serve the Lord. And I'm very happy to tell you that all my family, my brothers and sisters, my parents has gone to be with the Lord, but they all had accepted Christ as a savior. And uh, from my Hindu home, I was the first one to accept Christ. Then my brother, John, is a uh, pastor in the uh, States. So God moves. Somebody witness to you, God saves you. Because in God's sight, we are very precious. And he wants to see all of the people in this world to get saved, to know him as a personal savior. And Sunday school used to be my passion, and I used to, after a service in Blackstaff, I used to go out, catch the bus, no lunch, nothing, but go to Watuanga area, and I used to take Sunday school in uh, uh, not Christian homes, but Hindu homes. And one of them was my class teacher that I used to take Sunday school at home, and God opened the doors for me to three areas in Watwanga that I used to say Sunday school. So God can use you if you are by yourself, and God wants to use you to witness to others too about the Lord. So I thank the Lord for what he has done in my life, and I know God is going to do many wonderful things in your life. God bless. Thank you. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Auntie Annie. Thank you so much. Well, while I'm grateful to God for his hand upon her life and saving her, we should be thankful to the person who invited her in the first place to come to Sunday school. And that's how she heard about the Lord Jesus Christ and he transformed his life. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I have with us uh, Sister Rajeshni. I'm going to ask her to please just come and briefly uh, share as well. I'm sure everybody here has a personal testimony. Um, but due to the time, we have just selected a few people. Sister Rajeshni is next. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Um, I want to share um, about my mom. Uh, back in 1980s, she was diagnosed with cancer. And um, she had very last chances of survival. And um, that time she didn't know God. But then her brother, who witnessed to her, um, about Jesus Christ, and then my parents, they accepted Jesus Christ as their personal savior, and the miracle happened, she was healed. And from there, they started to come to church, and through them, we knew Jesus, and as two sisters, we accepted Jesus Christ as our personal savior. And now you can see my mom here, she's still alive with us, and rejoicing, glorifying Christ Jesus. Thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Sister Rajeshni. Somebody shared, somebody prayed, somebody witnessed, the whole family got saved. Praise the Lord. With Auntie Annie, hundreds of people got saved through her ministry. Just imagine if somebody would not have told her at that time when God intended for her to come into his kingdom. So many others would not have known and heard about the Lord Jesus Christ. And the same with Sister Rajeshni and the mom and the healing that she got. Uh, we have Sister Anjila. Anjila. 
Okay, so she's downstairs. Um, anyways, I, I will... The reason that I'm doing this, I'm asking people to share something, is to help you to realize that we all have had an experience with the Lord Jesus Christ. And we have a testimony to share. We have all that we need to tell people about the Lord Jesus Christ. Maybe we have forgotten. Maybe it's somewhere in our memory now. Maybe we're not paying that much attention in that regard. But God has done something in all our lives. And that is the reason we are here. That is the reason we have accepted him. And when we speak about evangelism and telling people, doing uh, personally witnessing to people, it is all about sharing what God has done in your life. Praise the Lord. Sister Rajeshni and the family, when they encounter somebody suffering from cancer, they have a beautiful testimony to share with them. Because of their experiences, nobody can doubt what God has done in their lives. They have the living testimony auntie who is still alive with us after so many years of being pronounced as a very, you know, third in ke mehman in Hindi we say. I can't find the English words, but that she was a visitor only for a few months and she would be no more. So many years back when they were little. But our living God changed and transformed her life, her physical body and the entire family accepted the Lord Jesus Christ and are serving him. Praise the Lord. So last week our senior pastor shared with us um, how important evangelism is. And as I said, I would like to focus on uh, personal evangelism. And I'd like to make a statement that this should become our lifestyle. Every Christian, our lifestyle should include telling people about the Lord Jesus Christ. There's two ways that we can do that. One is by personally testifying through word, by speaking, by sharing, by giving our testimonies as this uh, auntie and sister Rajeshni has done in our lives. And the second part is by living according to the word of God so that when people see us, their lives are changed and transformed. So it doesn't go, you know, one way that we can just keep sharing and sharing with our mouth and yet we are not living a Christ-like life. We need to have the changed life so that people will know who the Lord Jesus Christ is. Our testimonies are our personal stories. It reveals to people what God has done in our lives. It is a powerful witness. You may underestimate yourself. You may think, who wants to hear about my testimony? But you don't realize that people can relate to what God has done in your life and they can apply it in their lives as well. Many times when we tell people, they usually don't want to hear about another religion. But if you speak from your experience and you tell them what God has done in your life, nobody can, you know, argue with you because that is your experience. You're just sharing what God has done in your life. And you have to plant that seed and it will grow and bring fruits later in life. We have heard somebody went to the hospital bed and prayed for Auntie Deep, shared about the Lord Jesus Christ. Somebody invited Auntie Annie. I'm sure they must have just said, come, come, let's go to Sunday school. That was all that was needed. We just need to be willing to be a witness of the Lord Jesus Christ. I believe that many people, many of us, we have gone through difficulties in our lives. We have gone through storms and troubles even after we believed. Use that as an opportunity to witness to others. This morning, some, when Auntie, I think Auntie Sushila was sharing, she said, Christian life is not an easy life and we must know that from the beginning it will be a difficult life but it is a victorious life in the Lord Jesus Christ praise the Lord when we accept the Lord Jesus Christ it doesn't mean we are not going to see loss we are not going to see um, sickness we are not going to see problems and difficulties we are going to go through it but we have the peace of the Lord knowing and believing that he is there with us and he will never leave us and he will never forsake us praise the Lord that's what makes us different. So use the opportunity, whether it was cancer, you got healed from stroke or heart issues, you lost loved ones. If you're speaking to somebody who has recently lost loved ones, you can be a witness to them and tell them that you had that hope because you love the Lord Jesus Christ and he has loved you. They can also have that hope and find peace through the love of Jesus. If you, you know, didn't have a child, maybe God gave you a blessing after so many years of life and marriage. That could be an opportunity. You waited for 10 years. That 10 years wait, you can use it to witness to somebody who has been waiting as well. Praise the Lord. So there's always opportunities. Use whatever God has given to you. Share your witnesses or your powerful testimony so that people will be able to understand and come to the Lord Jesus Christ. Let's see some examples from the word of God of how people witnessed and told 
others what God had done in their lives. Uh, the first example that I'd like to present to you is John chapter 4, the Samaritan woman at the well. I think we all know this story very well, or incident very well. When Jesus met her, he talked to her, he revealed her life to her, and she realized in her heart that this is the Messiah. What did she do? John chapter 4, verse 29. Come, she went to the town, she went knocking, I believe, on every door, every person that she met on the way. She was so excited because she has met her Savior. She went to the whole town and said, come, see a man who told me all the things I ever did. Could this be the Christ? You know, usually we have, when we have healing, then we tell people and, and it's something good that has happened in our lives. This lady, she was living a sinful life, committing adultery. And Jesus revealed that to her. And she went, she was not ashamed. She went and said, this man has told me all the things I have done. She was not ashamed of her sin and her past, but she went so openly, invited people to say, come, 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 come and meet this man. Praise the Lord. Sharing what she had experienced. Are you sharing what you have experienced and found in the love of the Lord Jesus Christ? The second example is a blind man that we read about in John chapter 9. Now he was blind from birth. Jesus healed him. It was a great miracle. People saw him. They even saw him and they were amazed. And his life became a living testimony or a living, you know, um, evidence of what Jesus had done. So when people encountered him, he said, isn't it the man who was blind from birth? How can he see? And people heard about the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And uh, the leaders, religious leaders wanted to, you know, make it all go down and keep him quiet. So they brought him before them and, and they asked him, what happened? And that was his response, John chapter 9, verse 25. One thing I, I do know that though I was blind, now I see. So even though he was being, you know, pressured and persecuted, he stood up and he said, I do not know anything. All I know is that Jesus has healed me and I was blind and I'm able to see. And that became a living testimony to the people who were around. Everybody was amazed and more and more people started coming to the Lord Jesus Christ. The third example is Paul. We are all aware of his life before meeting Jesus in the burning bush and how God transformed his life and changed his life. And I believe that much more than the words that he spoke, his life and who he was before and how God had changed his life was a powerful testimony of what Jesus can do. Because when people saw him, they said, isn't it the man who used to persecute Christians? How can he stand up and preach Christ? And people were amazed of what Paul had done. Praise the Lord. We need to start witnessing, dear people. Jesus himself, fourth example that I'd like to use, through his word, through the things that he did, the miracles, through the teachings, and through his life, he was the greatest evangelist to ever walk this earth. And he saved so many thousands. And his work is still continuing still continuing right up till our age and it will still keep continuing until he comes. All these examples are showing us that when we share what we have received, God is going to do something and bring people to him. I'd like to share a few reasons why we should be doing this. We learned last week it is a command of the Lord Jesus Christ. Our master commands us. He said, go into all the world and... Thank you very much person at the back. <laughs> Go into all the world and Matthew chapter 28 verse 19. Go into all the world and praise the Lord. Preach the gospel. Make disciples of all nations. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. That is a command that God had given to us. So we should be doing that. We should be going out and <laughs> preaching the gospel. And second reason that I want to encourage you with is why we should be personally witnessing because it is an act of our love. It is an act of love. We were saved by the love of God and we should also have that same love in our lives. Jesus said that if you love each other, people will see and know that you are my disciples. Selfless love. Loving even when people do not deserve our love. Lifting up our eyes and seeing that people are heading to eternal destruction and having compassion on them because you have that good news and you need to share with all of them. 
one of the or the fruit of the holy spirit is also love so we should demonstrate that when dealing with people this morning i gave an example of um, going to shop and save and um, if you went to shop and save maybe and you found that uh, the 10 kg rice was being sold at 2 dollars just for a day what are you going to do thanks is i did might buy 10 packs of 10 kg rice and store it <laughs> in a pantry uh, most of us will do that we'll buy a few bags because it's very cheap 2 dollars what are we going to do take a picture send it to our friends on viva group hey come and buy rice for 2 dollars we'll come home call our neighbor sister shop and save is selling rice for 2 dollars only are we going to do that or not do you do that do you see something cheap do you start sending messages we send it to our work groups with our friends our relatives our people that we love and we know and we care about what do we do we tell them please go take advantage of this go and buy the rice it's 2 dollars only because we love them we want them also to be blessed from it it is very unfortunate that we have the best news in the whole world and we don't share it often as often as we should if the sale is only for two one day if you are a selfish person you're going to buy as many as you can keep it safely in your home and you're going to remain tight lipped and not share it with anybody because you don't want anyone else to receive that and be blessed and save some money it's unfortunate that many of us we have found the love of the lord jesus christ our lives have been changed and transformed we have the hope of everlasting life to live forever in heaven where god has made a place for us we have the source of healing we have the source of all peace in our lives we have the source and we know the source of victory and yet we choose to remain silent and not share it with the rest of the world the love that is in our lives should propel us to share what we know withholding that news could lead somebody to destruction there are people who are dying every day there are people who are making wrong choices every day in their lives there are people who are living their lives as if it will never end the people who are living without any hope and i believe that god has placed us wherever we are in the communities that we live in the places that we go to school to in the workplaces in the usual bus rides that we take in the usual taxis that we hire and the people that we encounter in our lives god has placed you there to be his witness sharing what you have just like you would share about the 2 dollars 10 kg rice that would go bad in a few months time that people will eat and finish and take out of their bodies but when we have the good news can we please have that same excitement and say lord forgive me for i have been weak in this area up till now but from this point onwards i want to be that person that will be sharing this best news that i ever have to the rest of the world and the people that i love and care praise the lord it demonstrates your love sharing about the lord jesus christ builds your faith as well so it is a command of the lord it is an act of love it will build your faith people came and testified from this morning when you are sharing it builds your faith i hope it has reminded you of how you were saved and how god had changed your life from that time and and it's it's uh, you know many years we have spent in the church in our christian work we may have forgotten what god had done so let's remind ourselves as build our faith when we are sharing and we make this a habit in our lives people will keep asking questions and we'll go back and read we'll prepare ourselves it will build our faith when we want to share we're going to prepare our lives and we're going to prayerfully prepare ourselves it's going to build our faith as well so that's point number 3 that i would like to make point number 4 sharing you're gathering up treasures in heaven just like jesus said store up treasures in heaven where it cannot be destroyed so do that and the fifth point that i like to make that evangelism helps us to share the hope that we have in our lives with the rest of the world
you know when um, two people fall in love they say that it's shown on their faces it's not my saying but people who <laughs> who have uh, had love marriages would know and testify they said when people fall in love and they are so eager and excited you know the hope that they have with spending with each other through the love that they share it's shown and obvious and these days it doesn't need to be shown on their face it will just go on the status update and people will start updating in a relationship got engaged got married they want to share to the whole world that they are now going to make a pledge and you know love and hope with hope to have a life with this person for the rest of their life they are so bubbling with love and hope so should we be praise the lord because jesus has loved us and we love him so should it be he should be in our minds we should be telling people about it and that hope and that love should be shown through our lives and through our faces that when people meet us they know that something is different about this person something is different about this person praise the lord i believe if we are forcing people to go and evangelize then there's something seriously wrong with with our christian walk with the lord because that should come from within our hearts because we have received from him we want to share that good news to the rest of the world and sharing the good news also helps to please god because that's what he has asked us to do how can we do this how can we share our, our personal testimonies please share it with all truthfulness don't make things up in hindi we say teen mein tera please don't add things to your personal testimony you share what god has done in your life praise the lord don't uh, exaggerate don't sugar coat you know don't don't beat around the bush you just tell the people what god had done in your life with all uh, and honesty focus on god he should be the center of your sharing it's not people i know that you know we are fond of saying i went here to this person to this place this pastor prayed this evangelist came and prayed but it is god who is doing all the work they have just made themselves available and god has used them and through them you have received the healing but the source of the healing is god so when you are sharing your testimony please be mindful that we do not deviate the from from where the glory should be going and that glory should be going to god and god alone let your focus be him praise the lord otherwise people are going to come and see the pastor and not meet jesus <laughs> that's what happens usually if somebody is receive healing came and prayed uncle prayed for him and then they'll say come come we go pastor madan prayed and i was healed no we need to tell them let's go to the church we are going to pray together and jesus is going to heal you if you believe in him because that's the source of healing not any individual praise the lord so whenever you're sharing your testimony please ensure that your focus is always on god because he is the source of the transformation that you have received in our lives please keep it simple you know we are fond of uh, using religious terms once we become very aware of of our word and our teaching so don't tell them you need to have salvation you need to you know be sanctified all i'm saying keep it simple you just share what god has done in your life and you tell them why you are still loving the lord jesus christ and what you have received from him and uh, another point that i would like to make please practice so keep sharing your testimonies so that you know that you are sharing whatever you are sharing it brings glory to the name of jesus over and over again you will read in the bible that people came in great numbers to meet the lord jesus christ and you'll you'll read that people heard and they came many of them saw with their own eyes but the others who did not see they came because they heard they didn't have any internet they didn't have any social media no facebook instagram you can't have live feed that is going on right now and people can you know come across and hear they didn't have tvs and i'm not sure i think most likely no radio channels as well they didn't have anything they didn't even have cars to go around and tell people how did people know that jesus was doing what he was doing in those cities and those towns in those villages because people were telling each other hey come this is what jesus has done so they heard and they came how did they hear because somebody told them and the same that that i'm trying to the point i'm trying to make here is we need to start telling people about the love of the lord jesus christ and if you are failing to do so then we are 
we should seriously ask ourselves where we stand with our work with the Lord Jesus Christ. Most of you who testify that you or your family have been saved because somewhere along the line in your life you've heard about the Lord Jesus Christ and then when the need arose, you came and you were saved and your life was changed. So that's about sharing with your word, with your words, verbally. The second point that I'd like to make before we conclude is you should live a life in such a way according to the word of God that people will see you and their lives will be changed and transformed as well. Last week, senior pastor said, we are the salt of this earth. So we should remember that. And somebody said, be careful how you live. You may be the only Bible some person ever reads. I think this statement has been said so many times and you may have read it across, but it carries so much weight because people may have never read the Bible, but seeing you live a life Christ-like life will change and transform their lives. At the same time, can I please give a warning to all of us that if you are not living a life that is Christ-like, then we are also leading people astray. They are not recognizing the true Jesus that we know. So please make sure that your lives are changed and transformed. Uncle Samuel uh, this morning testified how he was Involved in all those things in his life, drinking and partying and, and other things. But when he was reminded of God's love, he came back. And from that day onwards, 18 years, he shared he has, his life has been changed and transformed. Now this morning when he testified and he said, Jesus has changed my life. And, uh, you know, I have found peace in him and love in him. My life has been changed and transformed. And if I'm sitting there and I'm hearing him testify... And I know every night he carries a beer bottle from the shop and goes and has, you know, drinks from that bottle every night in his home. I'm going to laugh at his testimony because his life is not showing what he's testifying with his mouth. He's saying that God has changed him, but his life is not changed. It's still the same. So we need to live a life. Our lives need to be really changed and transformed as we are testifying so that when people see us, they know that we are the people of the living God and we are his children. And they'll be drawn to the Lord through us and through our lives. So your life must be overflowing with love. Your life must be overflowing with power that comes from the Lord. Your life must be overflowing with faith and hope that even though you go through difficulties and storms, you're able to stand victorious in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. That you may shed tears, but you have not lost all hope. You may lose loved ones. You may cry and weep and mourn for them, but you know that your hope rests in heaven. So that when people meet you and see you and greet you and know you, they will know that we serve a living God who never leaves us and never forsakes us and that we are preparing our lives to live forevermore with the Lord Jesus Christ. So please share your testimonies. Live a life that is pleasing to the Lord so that people can come and accept the Lord Jesus Christ. All this can be done through the power of the Holy Spirit. As I conclude, can I please ask you all to stand? You know, sharing the testimony will become effective if you are filled with the Holy Spirit. Living a life that is pleasing to the Lord will only be possible through the Holy Spirit. And uh, if you read Acts and you see what happened after the day of Pentecost, you read time and time again, Paul is testifying that People were being added to the kingdom of the Lord as people stood and preached his word. People were added to the kingdom of God as they saw how they lived together. They shared everything together. They loved each other and they were united together by the love of the Lord Jesus Christ. They were drawn to them and they were added to the kingdom of God. They could not contain the love and the hope that they found in themselves. And they wanted to share it with the rest of the world. And you'll read in Acts, if you flip through the pages, you'll see that this particular city or this particular country heard about the good news. This particular country heard about the good news. People were being added to the kingdom of the Lord. They were traveling by road and by boats and going to places because they could not contain the good news that they had received and that they have experienced in their lives. They wanted to share it with as many people as they could. It was much more worthy than the $2 rice at the Shop and Save supermarket. It was the best news that they have received and experienced. Much more than any dollars and things of this world will give to anybody. The news that will prepare people for everlasting life and restore them in a relationship with the Father in heaven. 
So let's examine our lives as we stand. Are we sharing our testimonies as much as we should be doing? Are we living a life which is a living testimony of the Lord Jesus Christ? Do we even have a desire to share the good news? Let's pray that God will, will move our hearts with compassion so that we will be moved to become a witness of the Lord Jesus Christ. They heard somewhere. Let's be that person that is sharing all about Jesus. It's no use singing everybody ought to know, everybody ought to know who Jesus is when we are not telling people who Jesus is. Hallelujah. Can we just close our eyes and just dwell upon the thoughts that I've shared with you? How many people have we shared our testimonies with? How many people we have invited? How many people have heard the good news from us? Let's just ask God to help us. To send us out so that we can share the good news as well. The songwriter says, ask of me and I will give you nations as an inheritance for you. My children, ask of me. And the response, our response to the calling of the Lord should be, here I am. Send me to the nations as an ambassador for you. God is willing to help us through His Holy Spirit to share the good news. We just need to be ready and willing and have the desire to be a witness of His word. As we sing this song, let's just prayerfully make a determination and decision that from this day onwards, I'm going to do more, more as far as sharing the good news is concerned. Hallelujah. Ask of me And I will give the nations As an inheritance for you As an inheritance for you My children ask of me And I will give the nations as an inheritance for you, ask of me. Here am I, send me to the as an ambassador of your word I'll go out sharing the good news I'll share the good news with the people that are around us that the places where you have placed us in, in our lives at the same time I will share the good news to everyone that I meet 
it will become part of our lifestyle part of our everyday lives telling people about the love of the lord jesus christ at the same time lord help us to live a life that is pleasing to you according to your word empowered by your holy spirit so that your love and your light will shine through us and indeed will become the salt of this earth and give flavor to the places that we are to the people that we meet the interactions that we have and to the lives of the people that we encounter and come with, that we meet with we thank you lord for the people who are here lord forgive us for we have failed you in many ways forgive us because we have failed to be a witness so many times but lord today we have been reminded by your word that we have received the best news that anyone could ever receive and we need to share this news with the people that we love and care and the people that we meet empower us with your holy spirit so that we can become a effective witness of your love and through us oh god as you use us many many people will come to know you and will be added to your kingdom and find life everlasting that comes to the hope in the lord jesus christ thank you so much we pray for your blessing upon everyone in jesus wonderful name we pray amen and amen hallelujah amen. praise the lord it's a, it's a challenge for us um, that we become salt and the light of this world wherever we are uh, we should be able to honor god and and shine the light of jesus from our lives praise the lord amen thank you for that uh, the word and i pray that we will apply it in our lives we will uh, not just hear it and say okay it was good uh, but we will try from now to uh, be a, um, be an example that we will be able to reach out to those who do not know christ praise the lord <laughs> Welcome you all in the name of Jesus. We thank you for being here. And uh, just, I was just given a message here. We have a visitor with us, Maheshwar Chan. Maheshwar Chan, Loto Kase. Uh, let's all just uh, uh, welcome him. Thank you for joining us. Hopefully English, may, right? Uh, right. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay, we thank you uh, for being here. And those who are watching us online, welcome you all. And I know God has blessed you and challenged you with this message today. Hallelujah. Uh, and our announcements for this week, um, we will have our Itoke language service 3 p.m. this afternoon. And if you have your family or neighbors or friends who uh, speak uh, the Itoke language, you are most welcome to invite them and, and for this uh, um, service at 3 p.m. We usually have it once a month for now. And uh, Brother Tevita is right there at the back. And he's the one coordinating this uh, service. So if you have any questions, you can ask him. He's sit right at the back there. Uh, so let's just pray for this service uh, this afternoon, 3 p.m. And uh, we know God will touch those who come and be part of that service. And um, the weekday program, Tuesday is our regular prayer and, uh, day of prayer uh, evening, uh, 7 p.m. prayer. And uh, you can fast during the day. So we meet here from 7 p.m. and it's a wonderful time of prayer and, uh, and spending time uh, in the presence of the Lord, Tuesday, uh, 7 p.m. And then on Thursday, we have our cell group meetings, life group meetings, that we call it. Uh, and you'll see in the bulletin, uh, this information there and all these different areas. You can contact your area minister if you uh, want to be part of that uh, home meetings during, uh, on Thursdays and um, you can follow up with that. And uh, we encourage you to be part of these home meetings. It's, it's beneficial for you uh, and your spiritual growth. And then on Friday, our women's ministries and men's ministries and the youth meet for uh, their programs here. But uh, this Friday, uh, the youth have a combined uh, uh, service at Victory Assemblies of God, which is in eight miles uh, from 7.30 p.m. So we encourage your parents, if you can uh, drop your children uh, at the youth, or you can uh, talk to Brother Edwin or Brother Joshua at the back uh, for directions. And uh, we have a guest speaker who, who is here in Fiji. He comes every year from uh, America. And he's uh, a local who's moved to, uh, to uh, 
um, to the US, but every year he comes for a few weeks uh, and ministers around the country. Uh, and he, uh, God is using him to reach out to uh, those who, are, who, do, who do not know Christ. And he has a healing ministry, he goes around praying for people. And so we're encouraging, um, uh, we will have uh, him this Sunday, okay? I'll let you know. Uh, this Sunday he will be here in our service, uh, speaking on, in both our services. And uh, we encourage you to uh, not just come by yourself, but bring someone you know who is sick, uh, suffering, who do not know Christ, just bring them along uh, this coming weekend. But as I was talking on, about Friday, uh, we'll be meeting, the young people will be meeting at Victory Assemblies of God for that combine. And um, you can talk to Brother Edwin and Brother Joshua for more details. And so that speaker, Pastor Henry Lakshman, he will be speaking this coming Sunday, uh, 8.30 and 11 o'clock as well. And as I mentioned, bring someone with, along with you and uh, they'll be here, able to hear the word of God uh, this Sunday, coming Sunday. Also, uh, the cleaning flower arrangements will be taken care of by Narere Makwena Sori Life Group. There's uh, some upcoming events. You'll find that in the bulletin. Uh, There's a uh, lot of uh, activities going on. Um, we'll have a combined early next month, first week of next month. And uh, there's uh, Pastor Henry, as I mentioned, he's uh, uh, speaking in uh, different areas around uh, Suva in different churches. And, uh, and um, we encourage uh, those who do not know Christ and those who need healing or are sick and suffering to uh, you know, take them. And, and don't say that, oh, we have a pastor, like I mentioned, uh, like Pastor Edwin mentioned, that uh, we're not following the speaker, but we're following Christ. And God is using Pastor Henry to, uh, you know, uh, in, a, in a marvelous way as he goes around praying for people and, and, and reaching out. So God is using him in that area. Okay, that is, so that's all I have for you in terms of announcement. Just please remember 3 p.m. is our uh, It's Okay Language uh, Fellowship uh, this afternoon. And uh, keep praying for them and be part of that service. Praise the Lord. Amen. Let's all stand uh, and uh, we collect our tithes and offerings. And um, we thank God for his blessings in our life. Praise the Lord. And we return our tithes. It's because it's all from him anyway. It's all his. We're just returning it. And we're doing it freely and with joy because we know that he is our provider. He's the source of all things. Praise the Lord. Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this uh, beautiful day. We thank you for your goodness in our lives and thank you that you are the source of all things and all that we have, all that we are is from you. And we are here to honor and praise you. So, Lord, I pray that you receive our tithes and offerings uh, as we give to, uh, to you, Lord, for your kingdom. And it will be used for the extension of your kingdom. Lord, I pray for your blessings on each one according to your promises. We know that you are there for us. Your hand will be on all aspects of our life as we give, Lord. We give you all the praise and glory and pray for your blessings on each one and on this offering. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Um, you know, you may be seated uh, as the offering is being collected. Um, uh, you, you, you may be fortunate because I grew up in this church, literally. And, uh, um, you know, I, I, when people share about their, how God, uh, you know, healed them or did a miracle or did something, uh, from how they were before and they ch changed to what they are now. I, I don't have th that to share. So, uh, like I was literally, I mean, I didn't become Christian when I was born, but I was in church. So um, basically, I don't have a, like a very you know, nice story to say, oh, I was like this and God uh, changed me and I've become this. So you are maybe fortunate, more fortunate so you have something to share with others. So I will, I, I'll call one person if you have one testimony. Maybe Brother Edwin didn't uh, reach out to you, but if you have something to share about how you uh, received Christ, I'd like you to come and share before we end our service. Anyone? No? Okay. 
Okay. <laughs> I hope uh, when you go out, you can share your testimony uh, and not be shy like you are right now. <laughs> okay. I just said one, I don't know if you know, but uh, one of our old members, uh, Auntie Gloria Sanmogam, who uh, has been uh, with our uh, church for ages. I don't know, maybe before I was born, but she was a very faithful uh, uh, you know, member of our assembly and very, very faithfully serving the Lord. Even when she was sick and limping, she would come slowly, slowly walk all the way uh, and attend the services. But she, she was sick for a while and then uh, she went home to be with the Lord and we thank God for her life and the example she left us. And uh, so um, we had a funeral on Friday and, but we want to thank God for her life and we continue to pray for her family as they are uh, going through a difficult time. But, uh, you know, so just wanted to share that with you. Maybe you wouldn't know uh, because she usually comes for uh, morning service. But uh, so that's uh, Auntie Gloria who is now uh, free from all the suffering that she had the last few months uh, she had over here. So we thank God for life. Okay, so we've uh, come to the end of our service and... Uh, Praise the Lord. <laughs> All right. Heavenly Father, thank you for this day and thank you for your word. Thank you for challenging us uh, that we uh, need to go out and, 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 and talk about you. Show the world who you are. And Lord, we know that you are the answer to the questions that people have around this world. And, and not, we don't have to look far. The, the people in our own family, in our neighborhood, they are asking questions. And Lord, we have the answer. Help us, give us that boldness and the courage for your Holy Spirit to be able to be a witness, to be able to share your love with this, uh, our family and our friends. So thank you, Lord. Uh, bless your people. And we also remember those who are sick right now with their names on the screen. Uh, Lord, you know who they are, where they are, and their situation, Lord. And I uh, pray that your healing hand will touch them. And Lord, that they will have a great testimony to share. Uh, when, they, when you have touched them. So thank you, Lord. Uh, we pray for your Holy Spirit's uh, presence to go with us. Your, your love and your grace and your mercy will overflow from us and touching each and every person that we meet. So thank you, Lord. We give you all the praise and glory and honor for you alone are worthy of it all. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. God bless you. Meet with each other as you go. Thank you. And 3 p.m. is our Itoke service. God bless you.